Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. I'm going to title this segment, There is no game if we don't play. Once again, this segment is entitled, There is no game if we don't play. Now, this message is specifically to the children of Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth uh, who have had their names removed, their heritage removed, and we're sitting at the bottom of the barrel in these nations. A thing to consider as we're facing the coronavirus. Currently, my place of business has been shut down for the temporarily for the past two and a half weeks. Uh, my employer also has uh, given us uh, some time off. That's roughly about two weeks. I can anticipate that that is going to be more than likely longer than a two-week period. However, we shall see. And most people across the country are in fear. Uh, they're sick. They're quarantined. They're at home. Uh, some are being paid uh, while being laid off. Some are not and may have to file for unemployment. Uh, our people are going through some things that just makes it more difficult for them than others. Uh, they may not be in a financial position in which to endure such hardships. Uh, and when we're dealing with a single family home, uh, it becomes extremely tough on the woman. And in some cases, we have the brothers who are doing well with their children. And it may be a single parent home from the male's perspective. Uh, and that's an undue hardship on him. And it's an undue hardship on her as well. And it's made more so uh, during times like this. Some things to consider as it pertains to our people. What we're looking at is the dying of an empire. Uh, most may not want to admit or face up to this thing. Uh, keep in mind, as in the coming out of Egypt, Egypt was destroyed militarily. It was destroyed economically. Now, do understand that the purpose that we served in Egypt was that of servants, of slaves. And while there, we were to tend the crops and to build the structures and all the many different things, all the many different labor and rigor, rigorous work that the Egyptians themselves did not want to do. Uh, we are facing the same fate in the middle of these nations. We were doing the same rigorous, hard labor that the other people of the nations were not willing to do. And we have taken a liking to them, in some cases a loving to them, to where we would not we do not want to let them go and the most high is going to have to break us of the idolatry and he's going to have to break us separate us sift us away from them or those that are of a contrite spirit anyhow so as we look at our current situation we're seeing clearly to where there are no sports being played all the sports games and the sports gatherings have been canceled across the nation you're also seeing that the employers have closed their doors to the major factories and industry. I would like every person of the House of Israel to really pay attention to exactly what's going on around them. They may not totally understand it as of yet, and we need to gain a quick grasp and be of a quick study of exactly what it is that's happening around us and how bad this thing can really get. Keep in mind we were brought here for the labor to these nations. Keep in mind the entertainment source of our enemies is us. We bounce the ball for them. We box for them. We kick the ball for them, hit it for them, sing for them, dance for them. We are the entertainers of our enemies. And for the most part, that is the one place where we are allowed to excel is in sports and entertainment. And also, when we work for them, so I would like for all the children of Israel to keep in mind that's living in America that once there is no job for you and there's no role for you to be an entertainer, a comedian, a movie star, a basketball player, a football player, or any other of these games that we play, then there's absolutely no use for you and there's no use for us if the Most High is going to strip this man of his factories and his ability to provide for you to eat. 
and he finds himself in strife, in dire straits, as the Most High will strip him of his money, because his money is how he makes mischief and wars throughout the earth. So the Most High will humble him by bringing his money to nothing. So that is to come. He will strip him of his money, which means if this man does not have bread, that means he doesn't have any bread to give you. And at that point, we will have to make a serious determination of exactly who our strength is, and we're going to seek to find him. Some of us have already done this. Some of us are going to wait to the last minute. And for some of us, it may be entirely too late. And they may pine away within these nations. So, we ought to consider what's going on around us. The place is being economically stripped. And if this man doesn't have a factory for you to go to, and he doesn't have a job by which to employ you, he doesn't need you. Because at that point, he's being stripped of his position above you. So therefore, once he's being stripped and he doesn't have any money, and his money equates to his power, then all of a sudden he doesn't have the desire for mirth. He doesn't have the desire for laughter and entertainment. So therefore, your basketball players are getting cut off. All your sports entertainers are getting cut off. Your jokes won't be funny to him anymore. Your basketball skills, your football skills, and whatever other skill that you have used to entertain and amuse this man will no longer suffice. And for those of us who have been involved in this sports arena, uh, some of our past quote-unquote sports legends, once their time is up and the lights are no longer shining on them, they pretty much have no purpose. So we have been reduced to employees and we have been reduced to entertainers. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High. We are to consider why the earth is in such disarray. If Christianity was the answer and Christianity was correct, someone would have to explain why is there such wickedness and unrighteousness all over the earth. Majority of the nations upon the earth are Christian nations. If, Christ, if Christianity was the right thing to do and it was correct, then we would have to ask ourselves, why would we in why in the latter days in Isaiah chapter two, why would all the people of the earth, the ones that are left and allowed to live, why would they have to go up to Zion and be taught the most high's law if the law was done away with? This is a clear indication that the people of the earth, what they're doing is incorrect. And that can plainly be seen by anyone with eyes that the place is wicked and it's being destroyed, i.e. you see the plagues of the Most High, i.e. the coronavirus. And whatever virus comes after this one, and there will be one coming after it, is going to be stronger. It's going to kill more people. It's going to continue to increase. And like I've said in the past videos, look for the possibility of someone launching a missile somewhere, and all of a sudden there's wars added to the mix along with the plagues and then you're going to see the the lightnings and the thunders and the floods and the tornadoes and things like that to where it's going to be almost unbearable to the people of the earth however those of us that's walking in righteousness the most high will be our shield and buckle in the time of trouble so this is unto him shall we seek uh, and we're not to be afraid of all the other things that we're seeing around us but we are to consider carefully what will be our latter end? Because at this present time, if we're not needed, they all, you already should know or we're, and or should be aware that we are in the midst of our enemies. It's not that they don't like you. They absolutely hate you. And some people may say, well, that's not true. Some of us are brainwashed to this point. You know, anyone that's going to make laws to kill you and your family and hang you and incarcerate your children and run medical experiments upon you and work you without wages and make up a, a system to criminalize you, et cetera, et cetera. We all know the history. Those are enemies of you and your people. And we are all to wake up and to see them as such. So once our enemies 
no longer need us to work for them and they no longer need us to be their entertainers, then the next step for us is elimination for the simple fact that they are unable to feed themselves. That also means that they cannot feed us. And right now, we are at the table of this man with our hands out waiting for his crumbs. And that's speaking as our from our people's perspective as a collective. So consider exactly what's going on around you with this laying off on employment. As we know, as these hard times hit, uh, you're going to see an increase in crime because what a man is not going to do, he's not going to stay at home and be hungry. Okay. Right now, with all the, the filing of unemployment, last time I read it was 3.3 million. And I'm certain uh, that's not everyone that's eligible. Some people just fail to even go down there and, and fill out the application uh, for it. And there will be more in the coming weeks. Uh, some people are having their uh, their pay cut 20%. Some may have it more than 20%. Uh, some business will not re recover at all from what we're seeing today. And once the Most High starts to strip this man of his money, we will certainly feel the heat because we work for them. And it's going to be plain, be made plain why all of this is being done to them is because of what they have done and have been doing and are currently doing to us. So we are to strengthen ourselves in the Most High and he will be our shield in this time of trouble. We have absolutely no choice because it's going to be proven to the children of Israel that this very idol that our enemies have brought onto us, they're going to have a chance to call on their idol that he may save them. And we're going to see it right now. Speaking of those enemies of ours and their idols, no one has heard from the Pope. The Pope is sitting in Rome. Uh, Italy is devastated, have been devastated by the coronavirus. At no time has the people of the Most High, at the Most High's house, his temple in Zion, were they ever afraid to go to the Most High's temple to take their vows to the Most High and anything else were the Levites afraid to gather or anything of the sort. But in Rome currently, they're terrified. People are dying left and right. There's no great mask at the... Uh, at the main grove up there in Rome, all of this is is idolatry. And what you're not hearing the media address, you're not hearing the media ask, where is that Pope? Where is he? How come he doesn't gather the people in Rome, go out there and put his hands on them and heal them? Here in America as well, these preachers, it's a time of trouble. And they're going to tell you that they can heal and they can do all of these things. Our people are aware that all of this is nothing but game. And it's nothing but a hustle. And as the hard times hit and our people start to seek for answers, when these idolatrous churches, their preachers and their pastors, cannot provide adequate answer to comfort the people or to protect them, the people are going to turn against them, especially as they start to seek the Most High and find out exactly what the truth is as it pertains to his law. So there are troublous times ahead. And those of us who are walking in this law, we're not to be fearful of it. We are to continue to walk in the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, and therein lies our protection. But there are tough times ahead, and I foresee them getting tougher. So be aware of your surroundings. Do what you can to protect yourself and your household because these are very difficult times. And in these times, no one is coming to our rescue at all. So if there's any type of food shortage, water shortage, if there's going to be a laying off of workers, etc., etc., we're going to feel the brunt of this blow. So this is the point where we're going to have to, every man is going to gather onto his own people. So there's going to be a separation and it's going to be quick. Times like this, we start really understanding exactly who's going to stand with us and who's not going to stand with us. It also will make plain to us exactly who our enemies are. And also for some of us who have a contrite spirit, we will know exactly where to turn. That, we may, that way we may find exactly 
who our strength is. So, during this time of trouble, pay attention to what's going on around you. Make sure you galvanize with those who are of like mind or like minded. And keep in mind that all Israelites, all Israelites will not walk in the ways of the Most High. And those that you think may be your brother will surprise you and will be in total opposition to you. So make sure you're on your guard. Make sure you're at the ready. But most importantly, make sure you keep the Most High's law, statute, judgments, and precepts. Keep that before you at all times that you may see exactly where you're going and you may not fall victim to traps and snares. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Peace, Israel.